I want to launch more niche agencies. What's happening? It's Eric J. Olson. You know, one of the things that Kevin and I have struggled with for years is to niche or not to niche. And, you know, the, it's hard to niche because, you know, when you first start a company and for us, you know, as an agency, when we first started, we needed the work, we needed money, right? And without money coming in, I wouldn't be here right now talking into this camera and talking to you. We needed the money. So we took work that came to us. Basically anything that came our way, we found a way of doing it. As we matured and as the bank accounts got a little bit better and we had a little more financial freedom, we had the, you know, the, the ability to start to niche a little bit and start to define what kind of work that we want to do. Now, it really started when I started to create like a blacklist, like we are not going to work with these kinds of industries. So these are obvious ones. Uh, we're not going to work with uh, pornography in, 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 the, you know, in the pornography industry. Duh, right? I don't want, I don't want to be associated with that. Uh, tobacco. I'm not going to take on a tobacco client. Sorry, I just won't do it. I know it's legal, but I'm not into it. Um, you know, so it's things like that. They're, they're, I forget the actual list, but we had probably like five or six industries that were like, nope, we're not going to do work with them no matter what. And then there were some where we could take on that kind of work in different industries, but we knew from past experience that we weren't that good at it. But everything really switched when we started to look at, well, what are we actually good at? And we realized we were good in three segments. That's medical practice marketing, law firm marketing, and home services company marketing. And the moment that we started to niche in those three things and we reworked all of our communications and our messaging, our website, and our sales got aligned with that, we started to get a lot more leads in those three segments. Matter of fact, we stopped getting leads, as many leads at least in the old segments, but the new segments got way more leads than the old segments or before when we said we'll work with anybody. We've also since spun off a new agency, not really even a spinoff, we just created a brand new one, Rival Digital. So we have Array Digital that has those three segments I just listed, but Rival Digital focuses only on HVAC contractors, commercial and real estate. We've had really good success with that. And we're really, really excited about the prospects there. The thing is when you niche, you can get your ideal prospects attention because you're speaking in their language directly to them. I can say like at Rival Digital, we can say, are you an HVAC contractor? We're perfect for you. You can't do that here at Array Digital. At Array Digital, if we said that we would alienate doctors and lawyers and other home services contractors if we just spoke to HVAC. So we have to speak in generalities, right? We have to generally say, we can help your marketing, but we can't say for HVAC contractors. That's the downside of not niching. So there's pros and cons, but what we found is that we really like the pros. And what we want to do is actually spin off new agencies over time. Now those agencies could specialize in industries like HVAC, maybe another one for plumbing, maybe another one for OBGYN practices, uh, different kinds of lawyers. You could also do it by discipline. So it is possible and it may be part of our plan, maybe not, to spin off the disciplines as well. Imagine like a website only company. Now you can't speak to people directly in their industry lingo, but you can speak to the one thing that they probably want if they're coming to a website only company that is. They want a website. So it doesn't matter all this other stuff in digital marketing or traditional marketing. If they just want a website, then a company that only does websites is perfect for them. And that website only company could possibly provide the website work for these niche agencies I'm talking about. So I'm giving you a little glimpse into the evil master plan here, but it definitely is going to involve spinning off niche agencies. And there's a lot of benefits here besides just niching. One, it gives us almost endless possibilities and opportunities for our folks. If we're spinning off a company every year, every six months, well, people have to work there. People have to uh, run that, right? It's not going to be me and Kevin running everything. We are, we're going to need a lot of people and a lot of leaders. That's opportunity for everybody here. And that's the whole reason that we're doing this journey to $100 million, to create endless opportunities 
for our folks. And that is the way we're going to do it. So look, we need people. We're going to need people. If you're listening to this and you think this is a fit for you, reach out to us because we would love to talk to you about potentially bringing you on board. Hey there, it's Eric J. Olson. I wanted to let you know about my book, Million Dollar Journey, how to launch a seven-figure business. This is the story of what it took for me to go from freelancer with no clients, no employees, no revenue, to growing a million dollar business. It took me eight years and I made a lot of mistakes and all of those mistakes and more importantly, lessons learned are in this book. And we have chapter takeaways, five to 15 takeaways that you could apply right now to your business. Check it out on Amazon, Million Dollar Journey by me, Eric J. Olson.